welcome to Tennessee's At Home Learning Series for Literacy. Today's lesson is for all fourth graders out there, so all children are welcome to tune in. This lesson is the fifth lesson in our series. My name is Valencia Smith, and I'm a fourth grade teacher at Venus Stewart Elementary in Gallatin, Tennessee. I'm so excited to be your teacher for this lesson. Welcome to my virtual classroom. If you didn't see our previous lessons, you can find them at www.tn.gov backslash education. You can still tune into today's lesson if you haven't seen any others, but it might be more fun if you first go back and watch other lessons since we'll be talking about things we've learned previously. Today, we will finish our series of lessons using the text, The Legend of Quiche, adapted from J Jake I'm sorry, Jack London's Writings by B.P. Skinner. We also are going to connect to a previous set of lessons that use the text, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Also, if you didn't join me for the last set of lessons, don't worry, you'll, be, you'll still be able to engage in this one fully. Before we get started, to participate in today's lesson, you will need two pieces of paper, a pencil, a surface to write on, the packet, the student packet for ELA grade four lesson 20, which can be found at www.tn.gov backslash education. Okay, let's begin. Today starts our fifth of five lessons based on one text. Let's take a moment to think about what we have learned as we have focused on the legend of Kish. In our first lesson on this text, we spent time together determining the setting, characters, and events. During the second lesson, we looked at how Keisha's relationship changed with the village throughout the story. The focus in our third lesson was to determine the character traits of Keish through his words and actions. Finally, in our fourth lesson of this text, we determined the theme about leadership using selections from the story. By focusing on one text for several lessons, we have had time to think deeply about the text and to complete several close reads. We're going to use all that we have learned as a guide to create our own legend. Before we begin diving into creation mode, let's reflect on the paragraph we wrote at the end of the last lesson. Here's what I wrote. Because good writers always reflect on their writing to make it better, be sure you are thinking about how yours is the same or different from what I wrote. In the text, The Legend of Quiche, the author develops the theme of good, good leaders are not determined by age, but rather by actions. B.P. Skinner repeated the message that leadership does not depend on age several times throughout the story. He did this by using phrases to describe Quiche's age, like despite his age, and how dare one so young speak out in the council? At the end of the story, the author was sure to include that Quiche went from an insignificant boy to lead man. The author also used Quiche's actions to support the leadership theme. Quiche spoke up for the others and ensured they had equal amounts of food. He made sure he took care of those under his leadership. And finally, the author used words like popular, respected, clever, and intelligent to describe the traits of leadership. In conclusion, the author of The Legend of Quiche developed a leadership theme by using Quiche's age, Quiche's actions, and words to describe Quiche. It's time to check to see if I included everything. Did I introduce my topic? Yes, I used our introduction from the last session. Group the traits together? Yes, I used our groupings on the chart to organize. Use details to support the trait? Yes, again, use our chart. Provide a conclusion? Yes. Here's where I want you to check yours. Did you include a conclusion? Did you try to make sure that it tied everything together? Linked your thoughts together? Some of the transitions I used were at the end of the story, finally, and in conclusion. Use precise language. Yes, I pulled details from the text. In rereading my paragraph, I think I would like to go back and add more about the traits. I only included one sentence. Use correct grammar and punctuation. Check. How about you? 
Pick one area where you would revise your paragraph. As writers, we can always get better. During our fifth read of the legend today, we're going to consider how we might use this legend as a model to create our own. If you join me for the Echo and Green lessons, you might remember that we did something similar. We use what we have learned by analyzing the poem to write our own poem. We are now going to use what we have learned to write a legend. As we read today, our focus question is, how can we use the story elements and legend characteristics we've learned through The Legend of Sleepy Hollow and The Legend of Quiche to write our own legend? As we talk through the text, I will draw your attention to the parts that will help you answer the questions and the parts in your own writing. Then there will be time for you to practice writing with me. Finally, I will assign you independent work for write, of writing your own legend that you can complete after the video ends. This is the same structure we have followed for all of our lessons together. Today, like always, we will capture notes and details about the text as we go. I'm going to start a new chart in this lesson that will help us brainstorm our thoughts about the legends we have read and our own legends. Let's look at my chart. I want you to copy this first column of words. You, you do not have to, have to copy the information in the Legend of Sleepy Hollow column. We're going to talk through those together. I want you to create two blank columns, one for the Legend of Quiche and one titled My Legend. We will use our chart today as we look at a few excerpts or parts of our text. You have, to cop you have a copy of the text, you can use it, but if not, you can listen to me as I read through the parts. Also, don't forget to take notes on your own as we read. Like in the last couple of lessons, we will not be reading the text in full. Instead, I have selected, selected specific parts that I think will help us create our own legend. As I have said, when you are creating your chart, we are going to talk about the first column. You will take notes on the legend of Quiche and brainstorms, brainstorm ideas in the last column, my legend. Let's get started. What do you notice by looking at the first column? I hope you notice several of these are characteristics of legends. Which ones? Yes, the heroic characteristics, exciting adventure, historical facts, and supernatural events. A legend usually focuses on heroic individuals or fantastic creatures and describes an exciting adventure. It may have some bias basis in historical fact, something that actually happened, and includes some supernatural events. The others in the column are story elements we need to brainstorm to be able to write our legend. If you joined me on the legend for the Legend of Sleepy Hollow lessons, you probably remember that the setting was Sleepy Hollow, which is beyond the town of Terrytown. What was the setting of the Legend of Quiche? Write it in our chart. Did you write the Polar Sea at the North Pole? If not, add it on your chart as I did to mine. I want us to read the next excerpt from the setting of our text. And let's consider how it might help us describe our own setting. Along the rim of the polar sea, Quiche lived and died. From father to son, from brother to sister, from summer when the sun does not set until winter when the sun does not shine, Quiche's story is still told over and over again. How might B.P. Skinner's details about the setting help you create your own setting? I love the phrase, from summer when the sun does not set until winter when the sun does not shine. 
it is very interesting. It's a very interesting way to describe the setting. I think I will use that for his phrasing to help me describe my setting and jot down the notes on my chart. Have you decided on your setting? I think mine is going to take place in a forest on a mountain in Tennessee. Because I like the author's phrase, I'm going to apply it to my own setting. Hmm. In a dense mountain forest, from spring when the dogwood trees spring forth, through winter when the trees ache for coverage. Do you see how I'm describing the tree blossoms in the spring and the bare trees in the winter? Now it's your turn to brainstorm a description of your setting. Be sure to jot down your ideas and your charts so that you will have them when you write them down. Next, we need to consider what our story is going to be about. What is the exciting adventure? In The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, the exciting adventure was Ichabod encountering the Headless Horseman. Where would you say the exciting adventure was in The Legend of Quiche? Go ahead and write that in your chart. That's right. I think the excitement happened when Quiche went to the bear hunt and killed the mama bear and the cubs. Let's add that. Now it's your turn to, now it's our turn to think about our own legend. What is the exciting adventure that is going to take place in your story? I think mine is going to be about a young girl who saves her community from starvation in the 1860s. I'm still formulating my ideas, but I think she's going to have to go away from her community to make this happen. As I write that in my exciting adventure, I'm also going to add eight, early 1800s for the setting. Take a minute and think of your own idea and then write it in your chart. If you can't think of your own, you're welcome to care, copy mine. Now, let's refer back to the legend of Quiche and see how the author describes the start of the adventure. This will help us to write our own. The next day, Kish was seen leaving the village with his father's enormous hunting spear and bow and an ample supply of bone barbed arrows. The villagers whispered to one another, it was unprecedented that a young boy should go hunting alone. Hmm. When we read about Kish in the story, I like that even though he was young, he was able to be a leader and contribute to the village. I think my character will be the same way but the community will think she is not able to help because she's only 10. So I need to consider what my character would take with her on her adventure. Kesh took a spear, bow, and arrow. Hmm. I think my character is going to take her dog with her and her knapsack, which is what a backpack would have been called in the 1800s. I'm going to add that to the chart. Here it is, take her dog and her knapsack. Now, deciding on the exciting adventure leads us to think more about the heroic character or fantastic creature. In The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, the headless horseman was a fantastic creature. What would you say the legend of Quiche in this, what would you say about the legend of Quiche in this category? That's pretty easy, it was Quiche. Now, decision time. Who is your heroic character or fantastic creature? I think I've already shared mine, but I'm going to give her a name. I think I will call her mm, Eliza. And I want to include that she's 10. So I'll show you that on my 
chart. There we go. Now let's go back to our text and take some clues from the author on some words he used to describe Quiche. This might help us to develop our heroic character. When Quiche's father was killed while hunting to save the village from, the, from starvation, the villagers soon forgot him. They neglected Quiche and his widowed mother, Ikiga, who shared a small igloo together. This all changed when Quiche turned 13. Because his father's blood ran in his veins, Quiche was bright, healthy, and strong. When the village council met in the big igloo of Chief Klosh Kwan, Quiche, despite his youth, spoke up. What words were used to describe Quiche? I hope you remember that because Quiche was like his father, the words bright, healthy, and strong also describe Quiche. Let's add that to his box. Now I need to describe Eliza. And you get to think about your character or creature. In my mind, Eliza is funky, innovative, which means that she can create new things, and petite. Petite is a word that means small. So I'm going to write those things in my heroic character box. What about your character or creature? How would you describe them? Jot down your ideas in your chart. The next section is the other characters. In The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, we have three main characters, Ichabod Crane, Brumbones, and Katrina Von Tassel. Who are the main characters of The Legend of Quiche? Write it on your paper. I would say the main characters are Quiche and the Council. There are other characters, but these are the main ones. So let's make sure we have that in our chart. For mine, the dog would definitely be a main character with Eliza. The dog's name, the dog's name is going to be Skip. So let's add that to my chart. So I have Eliza and I have Skip the dog. I think that there's going to be a wise old woman named Claire in the community who encourages Eliza. So let's add that to my chart as well. Now, who are your other characters? Go ahead and jot down your ideas on your paper. On to historical facts. The Legend of Sleepy Hollow was set after the Revolutionary War and included a battle so we know it was based on a real event. How was the legend of Quiche based on a historical fact? Yes, that's right. It was set in a real place, the Polar Sea. There you go. Now time to consider the historical connection for my legend. Because I decided that my legend would be set in the 1800s, I can make a connection to the Civil War. The Civil War started in 1861 and ended in 1865. I think the community has a lack of food because of the war, so that would make sense. So I'm going to have to write that in on my chart. Be thinking of thinking if you're going to use my idea or imagine your own. Either way, let's write in our charts together. So I'm going to be writing connection to the Civil War. Next is supernatural events. The Headless Horseman was a supernatural event in the Legend of Sleepy Hollow. What about the Legend of Quiche? What were the supernatural events? Write it in your paper. Good. Supernatural events occurred in the text when the villagers thought Quiche was using supernatural ways to kill the bears. 
and I have that on our chart. I need to think and go back into the text to think about how BP Skinner did this. I have selected all the lines that reference supernatural things. Others were simply mystified. Ugh, Gluck, like some others, were, was tormented by young Keisha's hunting victories and fed up with taking orders from him. Ugh, Gluck confronted Keish. You've been charged with dealing with evil spirits to help you hunt. Witchcraft, a charm, accused Ugh, Gluck. I am just a boy, Keish exclaimed. I'm ignorant of these things. I've devised a way to kill the ice bear with ease. That's all. It's headcraft, not witchcraft. These feel a little tricky, but my, for, for mine, but rereading those lines helps. Maybe the community thinks the wise old woman Claire is a witch because Eliza has, Eliza has befriended her. They think that that is how Eliza gets food for the community. Yes, I will write that on my chart. Was a woman Claire thought to be a witch? How's yours coming along? What is the supernatural event going to be? I will give you a minute to combine your thoughts and write them on your chart. Now we're at the bottom of our chart, theme. There are actually several themes in both stories. In The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, even though we didn't talk about the theme in the story, I chose to write, the imagination is powerful because I think Ichabod's imagination really got the best of him when he left the party. For The Legend of Quiche, go ahead and write the theme. For my last lesson, we decided the theme was, good leaders are not determined by age, but rather by action. What is the theme of your story going to be? Your story can have several themes, but you would need to think about how to develop each of them as you go. In my legend, I don't think Eliza will necessarily be a leader, but I think she's going to really help the community. Even though she is young, so similar to Kesh in that way, my theme is going to be, age does not determine your usefulness. What lesson did you want your readers to learn as they read your legend? Go ahead and write your theme in the chart. Because I'm focusing on age, just like in our text, I want to reread some of the ways the author developed the idea about not mattering, but about age not mattering. Here are some lines. When the village council met in the big igloo of Chief Kloshquan, Keish, despite his youth, spoke up. How dare one so young speak out in the council? The villagers whispered to one another. It was unprecedented that a young boy should go hunting alone. Keish rose from being an insignificant boy to becoming the head man of the village. I like the phrase, despite his youth. So I think I will add that to my theme box because, but change it for Eliza, despite her youth. I also like the author's choice of the word insignificant. I can see how the community might consider Eliza insignificant too. I'm going to place it in the theme box also. I might not use the word, but it will help me to remember to use a word like it. Now, what ways are you going to convey the theme in your story? Take a minute to jot down your ideas. Fantastic. We have some interesting brainstorming here. I hope you have brainstormed along with me by either capturing my ideas for the legend you are going to write or you have created your own ideas for your legend. We have such a good start. I hope this will make it easier as you write. As always, I will get you started with the writing 
and then when we then you will finish on your own. Our first task is to consider how we will start our legend. Of course, the best place to get the ideas from our, is from the legend we have read this week. I'm going to reread the beginning paragraph. Be sure, be thinking about how you might use this as a model for your own. How does a person who began in humble circumstances become a legend? Along the rim of the polar sea, Kish lived and died. From father to son, from brother to sister, from summer when the sun does not set until winter when the sun does not shine. Kish's story is still told over and over again. It is kind of cool to go back to the opening of the story since we have spent so much time analyzing the story. When I read it now, and it has more meaning, how does the author start the legend? I see a few things in this. First, the author asks a question. I like the way he started it, and I think I'll use that. To whom is the question referring? The person is Quiche. Take a minute. How might you ask a question about your character or a creature? Here's what I wrote. How does a spunky 10 year old girl help feed an entire community all on her own? Look what I did. I used some of the descriptors that I brainstormed to be part of my question. Okay, your turn, write your own sentence. Let me reread the start again. Think about how about what the author did next after the question. How does a person who began in humble circumstances become a legend? Along the rim of the polar sea, Quiche lived and died. From father to son, from brother to sister, from summer when the sun does not set, until winter when the sun does not, does not shine. Quiche's story is still told over and over again. What did the author do after the question? That's right. He moved into some information about the setting and a little more details about Quiche. I need to think about what I want to say about my setting and Eliza. So here's what I wrote. In 1863, nestled in the dark forest on the Tennessee mountain, Young Eliza Brandt lived in a small community along with her family and a dog, Skip. Look at my sentence. What details from the chart do you notice that I've included? That's right. I have forest, mountain, Tennessee, Skip, and a date. Brainstorming before writing made that sentence easy to compose. Your turn. Take a minute to write your second sentence. I notice how the author talks about Keisha's story being told over and over. I want my next sentence to be similar. So here's what I wrote. The raging civil war made food scarce, but Eliza's innovation helped save a community and her story is still being told today. What do you think? I incorporated more of the details from the chart Civil War and Innovation, and also set up the people that people retell this story, which is what happens with legends. Your turn, write your third sentence. We have just written our first paragraph. Yes, it's your turn to finish it on your own. You will need to develop your adventure from here. Here's our task for today. I will read aloud your task. Be sure to copy it down as I read. Using the brainstorming chart, write your own legend using the details and format the legend of Quiche as your guide. As you write, be sure to orient the reader, organize your events, use dialogue, pacing, and descriptions, use transitional words or phrases, 
provide a conclusion, use precise words and phrases and sensory details, check your grammar and punctuation. And for our creative assignment, I want you to pretend your story has been made into a movie. Create a movie poster for your legend. Today was our last lesson reading The Legend of Quiche. Boys and girls, thank you so much for inviting me into your home. I'm happy that you have joined me by at-home learning series. Bye-bye.